The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Thursday morning coming into the long weekend. Markets close tomorrow for Good Friday coming into Easter Sunday. Uh, we'll have some action tomorrow in terms of economic news, though. You got non-farm payrolls out tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. We're going to be off the air, folks. Enjoying our Friday. I hope you do as well for a long weekend. But it is interesting as the market prepares for that economic data that we'll get as the market is closed. Does not happen often, but it happens tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. And we got some jobs numbers today. Jobless claims a little bit elevated. We'll jump into those in a moment. But you get the market right now trading a little bit lower. There's 8 o'clock in the morning up to a high of above 41.24. And since then, we're dropping. We're down to basically the pre-market lows. Those lows overnight. 4105. We're trading right now at 4109. We made it just under 4100 briefly yesterday in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 66 points right now. You can see coming into that lower boundary area in the NASDAQ 100, we'll call it 13,000 right on the dot. Dow off 50 points. And how about the Russell? Positive by three this morning, pulling back a bit, but well off of the lows of where we were yesterday for the Russell 2000. Bitcoin, 28,000 on the dot this morning, 28,000, down about 385 bucks. Crude, Look at the low volatility in crude, right? We're getting extreme volatility in yields. We're getting pretty decent volatility right now in the markets in both directions. And crude, just been chopping around between about 80 and $81. Make it up to 81.81, just below that level throughout the week. And we're trading at 80.54. Gold contract, quite the acceleration this week. 2026, gold technically negative by about $10 on the session. We're coming back to the lows that we had last night at about 11 p.m. Eastern time. And you jump to notes and bonds and uh, a little bit of lower price, higher yield. But all things considered, folks, we got the 10-year right now sitting under 3.3%, under 3.3, 3.298 to be exact. So call it 3.3%, the yield on the 10-year. And out of curiosity, what are we talking about on the two-year right now? The two-year, 3.785. We'll jump to the two-year as we pull back just a bit, 3.785, uh, the two-year. Negative by almost two ticks. Is that right? Yes, it is from the session yesterday, but a little bit of a pullback from that 830 number. And why not? Let's jump into the jobless claims. And as Bloomberg puts it, beat estimates after updated seasonal factors. So the number here, initial unemployment claims decreased by 18,000 to 228,000. The market was looking for about 200. So we have more than the market was looking for. But what's important here is the revision to the previous month. How about adding almost 50,000 jobs to the month of February? That number goes up to 246,000. So what do we got? We got 246 and we got 228 in the last two weeks. Those are rising numbers from what we've seen recently and continuing claims, okay? A big number there, 1.82 million unchanged, but more than the, what the market was looking for. Yeah, and this one, it's always interesting, the seasonal factors, right? Things had just been adjusted in terms of how they factor in those seasonal factors during the pandemic, given that there's, there's just, let me read that one again. I'll just read it out. Economists at the Labor Department had to switch the way that they adjust for seasonal factors during the pandemic, given that the distortions were so large. Today's report maintains that method for the first year of the pandemic, but uses the traditional way when looking at data before March 2000 and June 2021. I don't even know what that means. I mean, I do, but you see how things can get distorted, right? So what are they saying here? That report maintains that method in terms of switching the way that they have seasonal factors for the first year of the pandemic, but uses the traditional way when looking at data before March 2020 and after June of 2021. So it's interesting that you have one way to use the data during the pandemic and another way afterwards. Yes, there's definitely different seasonal factors during the pandemic. But when you start factoring in different adjustments, and are those adjustments always correct? I'm not sure. But nonetheless, bottom line is four-week moving average of initial claims, 
237,000 from an upwardly rise 242 in the prior period. Pretty decent numbers. We were dealing with under 200,000 for a while on initial unemployment claims. We've gotten a lot of soft data recently for the economy and the market. Um, yeah, slightly pricing that in as we've seen a slow and steady decline we reach 4171 on tuesday you trade off on that number and it's been lower lows and lower highs since then we're coming into the final trading day of this week as we come into a pretty important non-farm payroll number and that's following the adp number we got on wednesday we jump over to the vix this morning volatility index yeah pay attention man vix spiking back up to near 20 all things considered relatively low um, but not in the 18s anymore. We're getting a little bit of a spike today. Maybe this is the beginning of some tough economic numbers as we come down the line. And boy, we got a while to go, folks, uh, is what I will say there. All right, let's jump to some of the headlines. Yeah, U.S. profits set for pandemic size drop. Well, that might be exaggerations a bit. We've only seen one pandemic in my lifetime, and hopefully that's it. Only three sectors to see margins expand this reporting season. Investors to focus on margin outlook. Good old AI, cash use, and China in there. Excuse me, folks. Still getting over a little bit of a cough as I get it out of my system. But this is Goldman Sachs. <clears throat> Analyst consensus expectations for S&P 500 earnings per share to fall 7% in the first quarter from a year earlier, marking the sharpest decline since the third quarter of 2020 and a low point in the profit cycle. Those are a couple strategies from Goldman Sachs. If analyst projections are realized, this quarter will represent the trough in the S&P 500 earnings growth. Uh, a deep contraction in margins will mostly outweigh modest growth in first quarter sales. Just three sectors, energy, industrials, and consumer discretionary are forecast to report and move improved margins. Um, yeah, we'll see where they go out, man. But we get bank earnings next week, well, folks, and they go from there. Uh, we get some of the biggest banks out next Friday. Let's jump into it right now. Why not? Let's check out some of the banks. Bank of America, I think the old, they're the only big one that is actually out the following week. Are they? No, they might be the 14th. Come on, catch up for me. No, yeah, they are. So Bank of America is the biggest one that is not next Friday, but we do get J.P. Morgan, I believe. System a little slow playing catch up. There it is, J.P. Morgan. They'll be out with their numbers next Friday. I believe we get Citi. Come on. And Wells Fargo as well. A little bit slow on the earnings take up here as the market might have to restart that uh, think or swim at the break. But yes, we got JP Morgan, Citi, Wells Fargo, among some others next Friday. What is interesting, you know what we get first, though? We get First Republic a week from today, folks. Going to be interesting what they have to say, right? First Republic out with their numbers a week from, yeah, today. And then we get the big banks that follow. And it's going to be an earnings season that uh, the market's going to be watching closely. And then the big tech stocks, Apple, May 4th out there towards the end of April. Yeah, Google, April 25th out there. Microsoft shares, April 25th as well. Amazon, April 27th. Netflix, April 18th. It's Tesla shares, April 19th. So they're coming quick. As we get into it, bank earnings kick things off a week from tomorrow, and then we get into the season. We'll finish up the discussion with talking about some of those earnings numbers. We'll take a look at some of the other equities moving this morning. It's Thursday before the long weekend. We got markets in negative territory. S&P still sitting above 4,100, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by about 10 points right now, trading at 4107. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time from the TD Ameritrade Network Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the whole team at TD Ameritrade Network. They got some great guests, folks. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. If you ever want to learn about options, you want to learn about defined risk, even if you don't trade options, folks, understanding how they work, how they trade, how they're priced, how the premium is in them, uh, please check out the program and every trade they go over, folks, has defined risk. And in any market, defined risk, uh, I believe, is is a quality that you want to look for, man, um, because undefined risk, you better watch out in this market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. A lot going on this morning ahead of tomorrow's payroll data that we won't be open when the payroll data comes out. It's a unique experience, but Tommy, it's interesting. We got jobless claims, first time filers for unemployment insurance this morning. And the headline number is not a surprise. It's the revision of last week's. We, we came out with the number 228,000, as you know. But last week's 198 was revised up to 246. So now you're talking about a whole different outlook for the job market. And Tommy, we've had three employment data points so far this week. Jolts, which was weaker than expected. ADP, which was a miss. Jobless claims now much higher than expected. So you've got to think tomorrow's employment data, non-farm payrolls and unemployment, the expectations are for 240,000 jobs and a 3.6 unemployment rate. You've got to think lower on the jobs and higher on the unemployment rate, Tommy. Pretty interesting as traders got to position themselves, right, coming into that number when normally you get it at 8.30, markets open at 9.30. We're going to get it at 8.30 tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be enjoying my day off with my son probably hanging out, drinking some coffee, and, and then you got three days to digest it, man, before markets open on Monday. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, markets, you know, not a huge reaction. I mean, we're still sitting basically where we were almost last Friday, 
which is interesting because you put it, I mean, pretty weak numbers. And what do you think, Kevin, that these numbers are from March and we saw the banking crisis kind of develop March 7th, 8th, I think it was, March 8th, 9th, 10th, things really accelerated for Silicon Valley Bank. Point being, that data are not really into the March data. Yeah, that made a tighten things up a bit, but the whole discussion, if that banking crisis is going to really influence things, which of course it's going to tighten things to some degree, not really in that data just yet. So what do you think that we're seeing some slowdowns in the data at a time when, you know, is capital going to become a little bit tighter? Probably. Um, what do you think about as we go forward, man? Because pretty stark to see, just like you said, we got three numbers in a row that are saying, hold on a second, man, we might have some weakness in the economy. And if this is the lag catching up, Kevin, I think we got a little bit ways to go here. And that's kind of some of the rhetoric you're hearing out there in the market. Well, there's an old saying in trading, Tommy, the inevitable is always certain, but it's not always punctual, right? And we, we, we've been waiting for some of this economic data to weaken, and suddenly here it comes, right? And if you look at the flow of economic data so far this week, it's been weak across the board. And so the reaction in the U.S. dollar, the reaction in yields has been predicted. What hasn't predi been predicted is the movement in stocks, right? Everyone thought lower dollar, lower yields would, would put – bids or floors in for stocks and so far it hasn't now here's the good news what's weakened the markets throughout this week has been a lower russell right so the russell is actually firm this morning maybe that will take some of the volatility out of these names tommy but you know this is going to get interesting a week away <coughs> excuse me from bank earnings and then we go right into high cap tech it's going to get interesting in the next couple of weeks tommy I was thinking about you when I saw the Russell this morning, Kevin. I got the Thinkorswim platform up here. I'm going through the indices. And what screen? The Russell screen. A uh, little bit of a different story, man. With that in mind, as you mentioned, we're all uh, off tomorrow, thankfully. We'll be watching that economic numbers. But we got one more trading day in the week, Kevin. What are you guys talking about coming up on Fast Market at 12 today, man? We're going to trade CrowdStrike. That's moving this morning. We're going to trade Target. An, a little extension of the Ulta conversation that we had earlier in the week. As you know, Ulta has little shops within Target. So we're going to look at Target at, w for the overall retail. And then Mike Folio is going to do a presentation on Lowe's. So three interesting names as we get a week away from uh, first quarter earnings season. I like it, man. Well, Kevin, I appreciate the time as always, man. We talk to you three days a week, and it seems like every morning, man, we got some economic data driving the action. And as a trader, it's so cool. I'm always saying, you know, we're going to have, what do you think about the volatility, Kevin? Let's, let's, before we, we got the VIX near 20, but I see a period, and you've been in this business for so long, man, there's nothing like experience. It's, it's a period of time, in my opinion, and I don't have the experience you have, but I see volatility staying with us for a considerable period of time when we have so many hurdles to get over. What, what do you think about that kind of big picture of the volatility, man? Because not only are we still in a Fed hiking cycle, but now we have, as you mentioned, the lag in the economy, and we're going to start maybe transitioning to all of these numbers actually mattering where bad news is bad news, et cetera. What do you think about the volatility as we stretch forward, Kevin, for whatever it is, months or even possibly years? Well, I think if you if you look at you know the VIX, it's still historically elevated, but over the last maybe eighteen to twenty four months, it's not elevate as elevated as it was. It's still got a long term history of around fifteen point four. So you have to look at where you are in the calendar. You have to understand that we're going into spring and summer, so that has an effect on VIX as well, Tommy. But uh, you know. VIX is worth watching here and see if it gets back to some levels. But, you know, it, it, if the market reacts favorably, VIX will, you know, it needs inertia to stay up at these levels and go higher. Well, now the last two years it's had plenty of inertia. I don't know if it has it right now. So, yeah, that VIX is just another one of those things we have to pay attention to, Tommy. It's pretty cool, man. I put it back, the VIX, on a five-year weekly uh, to stretch it out a little bit further. And almost hard to remember, we were dealing with VIX in 11. We were we had an 856 VIX back in 2017, folks. Um, so maybe that's where my brain is in terms of volatility with the VIX at 20. Um, more beneficial, in my opinion, man, as we get movements in both ways in this market. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, man. We look forward to the show at 12. Have a great long weekend, man. Have a great Easter. And I look forward to talking to you on Tuesday, man. Talk to you soon, Tommy. Thanks.
Okay, folks, check it out every trading day. You heard it. They're talking about three great stocks, man. CrowdStrike. Did you see the movement yesterday on CrowdStrike, man? We pull up the daily. Uh, let's put it back to a 15 minutes. Let's really see the pullback. You talk about a pullback, man, from 136 down to 125. We're sitting at 125.80 and then two good stocks, man. Target. Take a look at Target. Put this thing on a three-year weekly. Just chopping around, right, from that pullback they had basically a year ago on their earnings in May. This thing craters from 220 to 160. You've just been chopping around there. And then, of course, you jump over to Lowe's. Always a little bit of a, a wild card with the housing market in Lowe's. And interesting to see that they trade basically the first quarter, right? And then they've held up pretty well. And boy, these home builders, man, really interesting to see where the market's going to go when you look at the acceleration they've had, right? Check out Lennar. Did you think that this thing was going to accelerate from a price point of 64 to 104? Meanwhile, we've had mortgage rates just skyrocket compared to comparatively where they've been. Uh, D.H. Horton, not quite the same acceleration. So there's winners and losers in that area right there. Interesting. I've talked about the development going on near me in Lakeland. Uh, Lennar and D.H. Horton, both building hundreds of houses in there. And you see the divergence where Lennar, basically back to where you were at the beginning of last year versus D.H. Horton. Not the case, man. They're trading at 247, down from 320 and uh, pushing lower boundaries. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at S&P open down about eight points right now. Interesting, right? Russell, the only one in the positive right now. We jump to commodities. You got the gold contract right now. Boy, that's quite a weekly chart, man. From 16, 18 in October, pushing the highs of 2000, 2027. That high from March of last year, 2078. The high from the pandemic, 2020, 2089. Pushing those highs, man, in that gold contract. And we jump over to yields. The 10-year, talk about a breakout, man. Bud Rolfs, the channel master, you're in this channel, you break out of it, that's not the buy, folks. Where's the buy? The buy was the retest, and boy, you talk about an acceleration, man, and what did it take? Sometimes you never know how it's going to happen, folks. The technicals lined it up, and what happened? The fundamentals made it happen with the banking crisis, and uh, yeah, my dad was talking about it on his show yesterday, man. This is alleviating some of the problems going on right now. You know, you got the 10-year, if you're holding 10 years on your books, you could have got 110 for it. Now you can get 116. Well, that's a big number, folks, because you look at the number of a company like Silicon Valley Bank. What do they have? Almost $100 billion in 10 plus year securities. Well, if you had 100 billion bucks, you just made $6 billion, right? That would be $6 billion less losses. And I'm ballparking all this stuff. It's not exactly how it works, but just to illustrate kind of in the simplicity of it, the mark to market for those securities, okay, when you're dealing with numbers that are that large, yeah, that would have shaved $6 billion of losses off their books almost, something like that, okay? You get the point. Uh, nonetheless, it's alleviating some of the problems, but we are not out of the woods yet, folks. Not even close. As the markets turn red, Russell in the red by one. All right, jumping back to that story I was talking about, Goldman strategist looking for, as they put it, uh, pandemic size drop for profits, well, just one chart I wanted to pull up I didn't get to when I was first talking about it. And it's talking about the sales outlook is solid while margins expected to deteriorate. They're selling more products, folks. They're selling more products partly because inflation. They're getting a charge more for the same products they're selling, okay? But take a look at it. Normalized as of April 6, 2022. So if you started at that date, we're going back a year ago today, okay? In the black, you have the S&P 500, 12-month forward sales estimates. They're selling more product. But look at the forward margin estimates. Almost an 8% hit across the board. Meanwhile, they're only selling 6% more. This is what we're going to be dealing with, man. Margins are going to be front and center as we come into earnings season. And as I said, they started off with the banks next week, and then you get into the tech companies the end of this month, the beginning of next month. And what do you got after that, man? We got a Fed meeting right at the beginning of May on top of it all. All right, we're going to jump to the big dog, Apple. Let's see how Apple's trading this morning before we jump around. Back to a 15-minute chart. Market's trading sell, folks. I don't know. if you, Do you want to be a buyer going into that jobs number on Friday for a three-day weekend? Seems like that might not be the case. Apple shares down a full percent this morning. Check out the NASDAQ 100, right? You just gave up almost 400 points from where it was on Tuesday, man. NASDAQ 100, the weakest index, off eight-tenths percent. You got the S&P off about four-tenths percent, and you got the Dow off about two-tenths, and the Russell off about two-tenths. But back to Apple shares. Apple's got quite a cash pile here, and they're doing nothing with it. And that's what the article's about here. How about $165 billion in cash? Uh, merger and acquisition mirages. Disney is the latest potential acquisition target to be floated. I mean, what's, what's Disney flirting with right now? $200 billion, something like that, maybe? Market cap? Jump over to the Analyze tab. You jump over to the Fundamentals for Disney, and you're talking about a company valued at. Come on. Where are my books? I think it's just slow on the uptake here. There we go. $181 billion is the market cap for Disney as you're trading at 99.11 right now. I don't know. That would be quite an acquisition for Apple. You jump over to Netflix just for some comparative takes in terms of market cap-wise. Yeah, as this market picks up a little bit of steam, my system having trouble keeping up right now with what's going on. Netflix market cap wise, you're talking about $150 billion. And then you get into like an interesting one, right? Talk about pennies on the dollar. If they would ever think it would make sense, you jump over to Roku. Let's take a look at the chart here first. Roku shares, basically at the doldrums, man. Yeah. I mean, you're at 38 bucks, all right? So you're not at the doldrums, but you're off of $500 within the last two years twice so yes you're at 60 but all things considered folks you were at 60 dollars in november before you traded so all you've done is you've gotten back to november prices for roku but when you think about acquisitions 
$8 billion seems like a much better price than $150 or $180 billion. Now, Roku ain't Disney. Roku ain't Netflix, okay? Not even close. But you take a look at the money that they've got on hand, man, and look at what they've done. They've spent none of it, okay? Spending on mergers and acquisitions for Disney, Apple's limited merger and acqui acquisition activity has slowed in recent years. It's basically nothing. They spent $1.5 billion in 2020, nothing in 2021, and barely nothing in terms of the context of how much money they have in 2022. Um, and everyone gets talked about here, folks, okay? I mean, do you remember when Roku originally caught a run like a year ago because they were thinking Netflix was going to buy Roku? Yeah, that didn't play out at all. And as they say here, they've all been talked about, whether it was Disney, Netflix, Tesla, okay, or Peloton, and Sonos, why not? They've all been disappointed because it happened ha has not happened. And yeah, they've been very shy to spend any of that on that type of money in terms of mergers and acquisitions. And Apple, they're outperforming. And boy, they are carrying the market practically with many of the other tech stocks doing the same. You check out Apple shares. I've talked about it. This year alone, what are you up? You're up almost 30% this year alone. And really, if you put it in the context, I mean, you got to imagine, right? We're dealing with, let me put this back, going back three-year weekly for Apple. To really put into context, the biggest company in the world, folks, okay? This is not what Max Payne looks like in the economy. And hopefully we don't see what Max Payne looks like in the economy because you don't have the biggest company in the world, which in theory has the most investments in the world because it's probably, what are we pushing here? Two point something trillion dollars, right? 2.56 trillion, so above $2.5 trillion company. And meanwhile, Apple's barely down. You're just back to where you were in December of 2021, as in there's no pullback, essentially. All you did is you gave back a run up to 182, and yes, that's $20, and yeah, that's $320 billion in market cap when you got 16 billion shares outstanding for this company. But is that really what a real fear in the market looks like, where the biggest company in the world barely has a pullback? As we are still dealing with generational inflation, folks, okay? The ADP number's out. You stay in the same job, you got a 7% raise. Raise. You change jobs, you got a 14% raise. That is pressure on inflation, man. Okay, so keep this in mind, because you start getting these tech stocks roll over, and yeah, you'd be in big trouble, man. Microsoft shares on quite a run as well, up to 283. Now, Microsoft, not quite back to where Apple was, right, in terms of getting back all the losses up to December, but still, you're back to where you were in October, and keeping things in mind, folks, you're back to where you were in October of last year, okay, October two years ago, excuse me, but that's after you had basically a one-way trip for the better part of 2008 up to the highs, and all we've given back is a couple months of gains. So there is the opportunity for greater losses in this market, folks, whether it plays out or not. Uh, what's Apple gonna do? Well, instead of splurging on deals, they've returned much of its excess cash for buybacks and dividends. A hundred billion dollars just in last year alone. We'll finish this conversation up when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to trade lower. And just because we got maybe a low volume day, folks, sometimes you can get greater volatility when you get less participants in the market. We're off a solid 25 points from where we were at about 8 a.m. this morning. Right now, you just dip below briefly the lows we had intraday yesterday, and we just eclipsed the 4,100 price point in the markets on the S&P. We jump over to yields, see how we're moving on yields right now. Not quite the movement that we're getting in the market. We do have some volatility. Let's check out the dollar index right now. DXY, a little bit of a spike higher, above 102, but all things considered, um, pretty tame action as we come into the long weekend. But boy, the day is young, man. We're only 12 minutes in the trading day. And as I said, you know, sometimes things can be erratic because of the low volume, but it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed low volatility in this market as sometimes less participants can allow for greater swings in the market. And maybe we'll see how it plays out. Market. Down about 20 points right now. Jumping around to some of the articles I had pulled up here as well. How about this one from the journal? Stocks have not looked this unattractive since 2007. I mean, are you seeing all these headlines, folks? All right, I'm not cherry picking them. Okay, the, I'm not giving you the bear cases. I'm giving you the cases, period. And they're all over the place, right? What did we start it off with? Goldman started off with U.S. profits set for pandemic size drop. The journal out here. Stocks haven't looked this unattractive since 2007. Do you remember what happened after 2007, folks? And what this is talking about here, the equity risk premium, okay? This is the gap between the S&P 500's earnings yield. That's pretty important. The earnings yield of a company is basically what it's defined of. And the 10-year tenure treasury sits around 1.59 percentage points, a low not seen since October of 2007, right? Yeah, we are in especially interesting times. I mean, what... You're seeing it play out in terms of it being talked about, folks. But even where yields are right now, okay, there is a huge competition for capital with the market in a big way. And you're seeing the 10-year the drop to a level of like 3.8%, okay? But what's important to realize is that CDs aren't that low yet because banks still need capital. They need money, okay? So what's interesting is you still have some real competition Okay, for yields. Now, I'm just taking a look at them right now. Give me two seconds to pull them up. And yeah, so you're talking about a two-year CD, folks, non-callable, is still 4.65%. That's right now I just pulled it up. A five-year CD, 4.4%. Those are really decent numbers, and that's going to be competition for this market for a long time. And the reason why I bring it there is because... 
this is going to be distorted a bit because we've had rates so low for so long. OK, so low for so long. And that's why you haven't had any competition. Right. I mean, if you're in retirement, you can't just buy fixed income when it's paying zero percent, folks. You can't do it. There was no way to do it. I mean, you can do it to avoid capital losses, okay, but you're not making anything on your money. It doesn't be, it's not the case anymore. I was reading an article a couple of days ago in terms of retirees, they got a lot of money in cash and that's probably the right play right now. Depending on your risk, um, your capital, the, the amount of money that you might need, the risk that it's associated, guaranteed 4.4% for five years. I mean, if you put together a five-year ladder right now, folks, okay, that's getting you 4.6% almost. 4.59 is what I pull up. And that's pulling yourself a five-year ladder. But if you just want a five-year, 4.4%. You push a two-year ladder, you're pushing 4.8% for a two-year ladder right now. Remarkable rates. And it's going to be competition. And this illustrates it so because the risk-free return is so high compared to where it's been. OK, so keep this in mind, man, because, you know, you see charts like this, folks, and they talk about it on a couple different levels. The first one they do it is they talk about it. The equity risk premium. You're only getting one point five nine percentage points. Jeez, folks. I mean, yeah, you know, of course we can get over inflation. Of course, the economy might not be as bad. And of course, over three, five years or something like that, stocks may be dramatically higher. OK, but are you willing to ride that out? And are you willing to ride it out for potentially only a earnings yield premium of 1.59%? Meanwhile, you got a risk-free rate of return that I just told you a five-year ladder is giving you 4.6% right now. That's a heck of a return, man. Now, as they say, the equity risk premium falls when bond yields rise. There you go. Or stocks P-E ratio jumps, either due to weaker earnings, okay, or higher stock prices. Yeah, that would make the case. What they also talk about in here is the CAPE ratio. Now, what this is, is this is based on the S&P 500's price level relative to inflation-adjusted corporate earnings over the past 10 years, or the CAPE ratio, okay? Although well off prior peaks seen in the late 1990s, okay, but we know what happened when we got up there, all right, we are still pretty decently above where we usually are. Yeah, well, what happened? We heard all the talk about things getting lofty, but look where we've been relatively over time. We're at some lofty levels, man. Take 2000 out of the equation because you know that wasn't real, okay? That bubble burst. 2021, We've had 10 to 12 years of free money, folks, okay? And these charts illustrate how out of whack things have gotten compared to where they've been. This chart goes back to when, 1950 almost, something like that. So keep those in mind when you see these numbers, when you see a company like Apple trading right near all-time highs almost, trading to where it was in December of 2021, and you see a market sitting at 4,100, and we see headline after headline talking about pandemic-sized profit cuts. Yeah, because it may be coming down the line. All right, what else we got pulled up? Let's jump through some of the articles we got here. Yeah, Google and Amazon, right? Let's see what we got. Well, no, let's stay on the let's stay on this one, okay? The IMF economist who foresaw who foresaw 2008 crisis expects more bank troubles. You better believe it's not over yet, folks. Okay? We get first republic earnings a week from today. That'll be interesting to see what they have to say. But there is going to be a battle here because they still have losses on their books and there is still the incentive folks okay to make sure that maybe you're pulling money out of those areas and so it's going to play out um his quote i hope for the best but never never a good start to a sentence expect that there might be more to come partly because some of what we saw was unexpected the entire concern is that very easy money and high liquidity over a long period create rates perverse incentives and perverse structures to become fragile when you reverse everything and everything's been reversed in um an instant in terms of how yields have moved over that time and i think the important part here okay over a long period and that's what's so difficult i think for all of us to understand which is why things have come out of the blue there's just the woodworks uh surprisingly it's been 0% interest rate since like 2008, folks. That's 15 years later, okay? You got people that graduated college in 2008 
They're now approaching 37 years old. They're almost going to be into their 40s. And they've never seen a time that we haven't had 0% interest rates. I'm pretty close to that. I was in 2002. Okay. You start talking to me about 7% mortgage rates. You start talking to me about car loans, 6 to 7%. I feel like I'm getting fleeced. The impact could be harsh as things stretch out. My guess is it doesn't mean banks are going to collapse, but guess what? It could mean that they're going to be tightening more than you may expect. And that is going to cause a strain on the economy at the same time that we got all that lag catching up for those hikes. S&P's at 4101. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. Be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now down about 19 points. And you can see, folks, we're reaching an area. I mean, we basically just got within a stone's throw of the market highs back in February. And technically, I mean, that's an area of resistance. And we've traded off that area. We'll see where we go from there. What else do we got going on this weekend, folks? It's Masters Weekend, man. They kick it off today. If you haven't downloaded the Masters app, folks, I download it for about four days a year. Downloaded it early, early this morning. I'll have it on my um, phone or tablet for the weekend. It's an outstanding application, and it allows you to watch multiple different areas in terms of what they have. I think if you go, yeah, you go to watch live. Now, they're just teeing, they're just teeing things off right now. Excuse me, one second. 
but you can see that they actually give you a feature group. You can watch Amen Corner. You can watch holes 15 and 16. You can watch the main group, or you can watch holes four, five, and six. They're showing people teeing off right now. And you got, uh, is that Mike Weir? Yeah, Mike Weir. He is minus one through nine, leading things off. Got to love the Masters, and we'll tie it into a little uh, financial aspect of the Masters. The winner, $2.7 million is what they'll be getting for first place, second place, 1.6, third place, 1 million and 20,000. The interesting thing here is, because of the competition going on with Live Golf, where usually they're just throwing money, the Saudis just showering money over everybody to try and wash over everything else they do in society. A little bit of a sidebar there. Uh, but what's interesting is the PGA this tour this year has de designated a few events this year with elevated purses of 20 million. The Masters only has 15 million. So you got tournaments like the Arnold Palmer Invita Invitational, the Genesis Invitational, and, and, and a few others that actually have 33% more money than the Masters. But guess what? They don't hand out green jackets, man. There's only one Masters. you got to love it. And I think this is Jim Nance, last Masters. Yeah, he did like the – what did he do? He did the last March Madness. He's doing the last Masters um, and something else, I think, as he wraps it up. But nonetheless, the Masters this weekend. And, uh, folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day off. Basil did his show at 8 a.m., so that's coming up right now. Have a great long weekend. Have a great Easter, folks. Stay safe out there. We look forward to seeing you back Monday morning. Stay tuned for Basil's program. We'll be right back, folks.